All right, so in this lesson, we're going to go ahead here and build our rendering rendering set so we can go ahead and render our iPhone. And as you can see here, I simply just have a uh, simple polygon cylinder that I just extruded up to go ahead and make our background. And the main key here is basically just getting lights set up properly so that we have a clean way of go going ahead and actually rendering out our iPhone. So what we want to first do is, since we're going to be rendering this with V-Ray, let's just go ahead here and create a light. And we're going to go ahead and create a V-Ray dome light. And we're just simply going to go ahead and scale this up a little bit here. Okay. And But we're also going to change the subdivisions here to like 12. Should be good. And we're also going to change the intensity multiplier down to like 0.2. And that should be fine for us. So let's just go ahead and scale that up to encompass the entire portion of the background and now we just need to go ahead and create some more lights here and we're just simply going to go ahead and create a V-Ray rectangle light now you can't scale this inside of the viewport because if you scale it inside of the viewport and the light shape itself this is going to make the intensity of that light come out extremely heavy so you need to go ahead here and scale it in the parameters of the light shape so we'll just put this up at say 10 for the U size and 10 for the for the V size and that's still probably a little bit too small so let's say something like 25 and 25 and, and this is just to basically give you a placement of where that light is so let's just go ahead and place one here in the front and we're going to go ahead and turn the intensity multiplier down here to like 1.32 and that's what or yeah 1.342 and that should be fine and we'll just go ahead here and duplicate this to create a second light and we're going to come down here and just place it near the ground and rotate it okay and basically uh, create a third one here just simply hitting control D to duplicate this and we're going to go ahead and just move this up and just try to make sure that it's rotated in a way that when we go ahead to import our iPhone here that that's going to grab the entire model and that looks good so let's just go ahead and select this and I want to come down to the near the bottom under the options tab and just make sure it's invisible this way it doesn't render the light shape and I'm going to do this for all three of these okay and I don't think there's actually one that's on this yes yeah, so we'll go ahead and turn this off as well okay so now <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead here and go into our render rendering settings and we're definitely going to be using V-Ray here to render so we need to just come down here and set an image height so I'm going to turn the maintain height and width ratio off and I'm going to render out a fairly large image as you can see at 3250 by 1828 and that's a, a fairly large image I'm also going to use the V-Ray frame buffer um, the image sampler here I'll just turn the, the AA filter type up to 4 this way it's going to give us a very sharp image for the environment here uh, I'm definitely going to override the environment and change the GI texture here and we'll just simply bring in a file node okay and I'm just going to use an HDRI that I typically use a lot and I think it's this one yep uh, for the in indirect illumination you have to turn on your global illumination for that image to light your scene I'm not really going to change anything here under the the settings tab so we can just simply keep those off there now for our render elements I uh, want a couple different passes here so I'm going to come over here on the right side and create a new render layer and we'll just simply name this uh, master killer layer okay and I have to open up the hyper shape or uh, sorry the outliner here and I'm simply just going to select everything and add that to the new master render layer come into the hyper shade here 
and this will just take a second to load and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new V-Ray material and this is gonna be for our background so we'll just go ahead and apply this and I'm gonna use a file node for the color here and as you can notice I'm always turning the filter type to be completely off okay so we'll use that one go ahead and minimize this and we will go ahead here and import our iPhone and it's this texture final and as you can see it doesn't show up and that's because I have the master color layer selected so let's just go ahead and select our iPhone there and we're gonna go ahead and add that to the master color layer okay just go ahead and scale this up here and I just want to make sure I get this placed properly and I'm gonna come over here to our rendering tab create a new camera just make sure I can uh, look through this camera and I'm gonna come over here to view turn on our resolution gate and this is gonna give us what's actually gonna render out and this is gonna be important so now that we have our iPhone basically imported here this isn't gonna render out smooth there's a couple ways you can do this you can either come under the attributes of it here just have one selected and simply just add an attribute under what is the the actual shape node here and you would have to add a subdivision but this tends to do it globally and I don't want to do that I just want to do it per model because if you do it globally it's going to tend to take an excessive amount of time so I'm not going to turn that on what I will do is just simply select the entire model group come up to modify convert smooth mesh preview to polygons and this is going to add a smooth mode on top of our our mesh and as you can see there it's going to be fairly smooth and whenever this renders out this is going to render smooth so now that we have all that set up let's go up and create some of our render passes here so we need a diffuse pass okay, we need a reflection pass we also need a specular pass and where is the depth pass should be Z depth right here and we're just going to go ahead and select this minimize here and we're going to take a look here at the, the attributes as you can see here if we rendered this out the image would for the Z depth pass render out completely black and these two settings are dependent on what is your polygon information here or your scene um, object information here and to turn that on all you have to do is come up to display heads up display and object details okay so now what I want to go ahead and do here is just simply create a polygon sphere okay and we're gonna take a look at where this is so 146 123 so I'll set our render settings for our Z depth pass at 123 and let's just go ahead and move this back to where it's gonna pinch through the the background here like 226 so what I want to go ahead and do is just simply set our Z depth pass here our black to the highest number which is going to be 256 but we can probably go a little higher so maybe let's try 275 and then we'll set our depth to about a hundred and this way it'll give us a really nice Z depth pass when we render here I'm not going to change any um, other settings here for that okay so now we have that set up let's go ahead and just simply duplicate our iPhone here a couple times and I'm gonna go do this with the perspective camera so we'll just go ahead and hit control D to duplicate here just simply rotate it 90 degrees that way we'll duplicate it again do another 90 degrees the opposite way here okay and we'll duplicate this a fourth time and just rotate it so we can actually see the back here and we'll go ahead and duplicate this again and I'm doing this just so that we can actually get all sides of the the iPhone to render out at one time and we just gotta go ahead and place this down just try to make sure that we aren't 
going through the the background mesh here. I just want to sit it on top of it. Okay, and then I'll just duplicate this one more time. Just move it up. And we will rotate it 180 degrees here. Let's say zero. And you can see where it's pinching through here and I just need to go ahead and pull this up a little bit. Okay. And we'll go ahead go ahead back here and look through our rendering camera. And just place where we need to go ahead and get our camera placed to go ahead and render out here. I just want to rotate that phone just a little bit so I can zoom in as close as I can. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and hit render. Um, and you can see the final image on the tutorial ad placement. Um, but before I go into this lesson, I, or into this tutorial, I want to give a big thanks out to Ben Tate and to the rest of the guys over at CG Touch Plus for allowing me to go ahead and create this iPhone for you guys. Um, I hope it's been a lot of fun to go ahead and watch this tutorial. Uh, just keep an eye on the website and uh, keep an eye out for more tutorials in the future. Uh, and I also want to give you guys a thanks for, for watching. Um, it's been a pleasure to go ahead and create this tu tutorial for you guys, so thanks a lot.